Christ in his second coming will come in a Melchizedek order, okay, to establish his righteous kingdom and rulership over the kings of the earth. Now when he does, something very significant happens in Revelation 15. His glory comes in through the east gate of the temple of heaven. His glory comes into the temple. His glory like a cloud fills the house so that no man could enter the temple. Then the living creatures give the seven bowls to the seven angels. So this is what we've seen in Exodus chapter 40 when the glory of Yahweh appeared in the tabernacle and Moses could not enter the tabernacle. And this is the Ancient of Days, and the one like the Son of Man was brought unto the Ancient of Days in Daniel chapter 7. So we're going to look at the saints of the Most High in this order, and we're going to go into the scribe's chamber. As we interpret scripture, guys, we want to do everything we can to try to communicate this message, okay, into the scribe's house. The scribe's house is the treasure, the, the source, the things old and new, okay, and it is the parable of the scribe, the householder. Therefore, every scribe which is instructed to teach is like unto the kingdom of heaven is a man which is a householder, which brings forth out of his treasure, in the Greek thesaurus, things new and old. Okay? So this is how we interpret scripture. The scripture tells us how to interpret scripture, knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of private interpretation, but the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but by holy men as God spake, moved by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we must compare spiritual things with spiritual things. These things God has prepared for them that love Him, and God has revealed them to us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, which the Holy Spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. So, if you're earthly-minded, these things are difficult to understand, but they are simple. It's comparing the book of Daniel to the book of Revelation. That's how you interpret Scripture. That is the prophecy. It is these two men. And, and what they uh, saw in glory in the revealing of the Lord Jesus Christ. So previously, we have talked about the 70 weeks are determined upon your people in the holy city, okay? To finish the transgression, make innocence, to make re reconciliation for iniquity, bring in what? Everlasting righteousness. Seal up the vision, the prophecy, and anoint the most holy. So key words here are what? Everlasting righteousness. Holy. Hopefully you watched a previous video and these make sense, but this is the revealing of Lord Jesus Christ. The name in Hebrew is Aleph Tav. In the book of Revelation, it's Alpha and Omega. Okay? Everything agrees perfectly. Now, Daniel's written in Hebrew. So, when we say for, forever, it's Olam. Zedek, righteousness. Kodesh, holy. Forever, ages, righteous, holy. So, there you can see everlasting, righteousness, holy. These are words in Daniel 70 weeks. Okay, we explained that in the previous video, but we have to go over this again, guys. He is the king of the ages. His righteousness endures forever. He is the Holy One ruling on Mount Zion. Okay? So, we do have other videos on how to be a citizen of heaven. Okay? Guys, these are things you must know. You must be. It's not just who you're learning of something. This is who you are if you are a true believer entering the millennium, okay? So the everlasting righteousness and holy Melchizedek priesthood applies to him and to his believers entering the millennium. All right, just to look at our previous message, we had broken down the decoding of Daniel 9 and the 70 weeks. So basically it says 70 weeks are determined for your people. And then it describes six or seven things which... Um, were to take place. We found those all in the book of Revelation. And there were a couple things that came out in this study that I had to do another message on. Okay. And those being this point here to bring in everlasting righteousness, these two words, everlasting, olam, righteousness, zedek. Okay. That's what Daniel is. Daniel's in Hebrew. And then we find those, the word righteous, only after Revelation 15, as we said in the intro of the video. This is being applied to him. Okay? In Daniel, I mean, in, in Revelation 15, 16, 19, okay, many times. Then it goes on to talk about anoint the most holy. So, 
it also begins to use this word to describe him as holy as well after Revelation 15, um, uh, which you can see here, and it will be part of our message today. Now, what ended up happening in this study was a few things that I can only describe as errors in the King James Version that are obscuring this a phenomenal information, phenomenal revelation of what is taking place. Okay, so it really is important, guys, for you to understand what has happened in the spirit realm. What we're trying to do is teach you what has already happened in the spirit and what the book of Revelation says. Okay, uh, that's all I can do is just teach this over and over in hopes that someone understands it. So this was our previous video. Now, in our next set of notes... The way that we want to communicate this, okay, it's basically the same thing. We're saying the same thing, but we're attributing these characteristics to Melchizedek. We'll explain why. Christ came in the order of Melchizedek. Now, you can read about that in Hebrews chapter 6, 7, 8, 9, and really up to 10, okay? And for everybody, that order of Melchizedek was his first coming. And honestly, we... Most people don't even really understand that. What is the order of Melchizedek? I don't have time in this video to do it, but that is the order that he came to be as priest. Okay, so he didn't come as a Levite. He came through the tribe of Judah. So in order for him to qualify as a priest, there had to be a change. Okay, so he came in the order of Melchizedek in a Melchizedek priesthood. Okay, now the Melchizedek priesthood um, is attributed to each aspect of his coming. Most of the details in Psalm 110, when it talks about Melchizedek and the deals with his judgment, deals with his second coming. Okay, that's why we're calling it the revelation, the olive tav, the alpha and omega of the Melchizedek priesthood in his second coming. Okay, because these were not fulfilled in his first coming. Okay, they were not fulfilled in the last 2000 years. They are only fulfilled in his second coming. Okay. Now, once again, as we explain, these words, everlasting, righteousness, and holy, all right, they, we find them again, as we mentioned, we're going to explain again, Revelation 15, 16. They are also in the Melchizedek order. Now, the other thing we're going to say to you is this aspect deals with that. A brief summary of the Melchizedek priesthood and his second coming. This set of notes deals with the people. Okay, so when I say everlasting, righteousness, and holy, you say, well, that's, that's God. That's not people. Well, no, it's not. A lot of people will say things like, oh, we're sinner. Everybody's going to die. No one is holy. That's actually not what the Bible says. Okay, those are nice religious statements to make you sound humble, but that's just not scripturally correct. Okay, it's not true. So this whole page deals with how everlasting righteousness and holy is ascribed to people. Okay? So we'll get to that. That is our second page of notes. But let's get back to, as we explain and look at these uh, characteristics over there in Revelation 15. And we want to spend a little time on this, guys, to um, go over what, what was discovered in doing this study. Okay, so we got Revelation, we got this Melchizedek priesthood, we got these words, everlasting righteousness, holy, right? Okay, so what we've done is everlasting in Hebrew is olam. Righteousness is zedek. Holy is kodesh. So what we've done is basically take those words and just give them a blue, kind of highlight them, point them out to you so you can see them. And what you can't see is that these words are only used after Revelation 15, as we mentioned. So when you do these studies, guys, you have to dig into the scriptures. You have to dig into the original language, sometimes even into other manuscripts. Now, I realize most of you will not do that extent of work. Okay, you're just going to click on YouTube and listen to what everybody says. But that's Really, this message is really for disciples, really people that will study and learn, okay? That's really this whole channel, what it's for. It's not really for lay people. It's just, you know, you think it's about you, and that's where, you, you know, it's just difficult. So, 
in, in this song, Revelation 15, 3, great and marvelous are your works, O Lord God Almighty. Now, if we take this, Lord God Almighty, what this is, what is this talking about? It's Yahweh El Shaddai. Okay, now who is this? This is Christ. So first off, when you look at the words and you look at the names, you'll see that Yahweh is Christ. El Shaddai is Christ. Okay? So it's saying he is Yahweh. He is El Shaddai. And then it says, Righteous and true are your ways, you king of the ages. Now, I'm going to suggest, there's a couple ways of looking at this. I'm going to suggest king of the ages. Because now king of the ages gives us this olam, everlasting. Okay, so if we were to read this in Hebrew, it would say olam. But this is in Greek, and it's uh, a, uh, eon. It's like a heon, and a heonon, all right, in, in, in the uh, Greek. So it's kind of like the word we get eons and eons, right? That word is comes from the Greek word, and it is ages, okay? So here he is the king of the ages. Now, why this is so important is because just as he comes in the Father's glory, in the Father's name as Yahweh and El Shaddai, he also comes in Ancient of Days. That's what this means. Okay? He is the Ancient of Days in Daniel 7. All right? Then verse 4. Who shall not fear you, O Lord? Who's Lord? Yahweh. yod heh vav if you were to translate that into Greek, right? And glorify your name. All right. So who do you fear him? That's what I'm. That's why I'm doing this. Do you actually fear him? Are you terribly afa- afraid of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? You answer that yourself. Okay. You don't have to answer me. Who shall not fear you, O Yahweh, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. Okay. So just like we saw righteous. Okay. First time it's being used, righteous. First time it's being used, holy. To the words. Zedek Kodesh, all right, that we saw in Daniel. And the wrath of God who lives ages of the ages, okay, Aeon, Aeon, all right, so ages of the ages, that's why we're saying, okay, king of the ages, this is in another manuscript, the King James says king of the saints. Now, some manuscripts read king of the nations, so it can be viewed as king of the nations, some view Some use the expression king of the ages. Both titles are used in parallel in the parallel song. Okay, so the same song that you see here, Revelation 15, is in Jeremiah 10. Okay, so in Jeremiah 10, it says, Who would not fear you, O king of the nations? So king of the nations is is a good way of looking at that, okay? And then verse 10 says, Yahweh, the true and living God, and everlasting olam king all right so you could really look at he is the king of the nations or king of the ages the really reason we're suggesting ages is it does say ages in verse 7 okay so revelation 15 7 reinforces this by he who lives ages of ages just like it says in jeremiah 10 the true and living god everlasting king okay so, you are righteous, O Yahweh, which are, which was the Holy One. Now, another mysterious thing that I found in studying this, where the King James, okay, they didn't help me with that, the King of the Ages. If you read the King James, what it says is this, you are righteous, O Lord, which are, which was, and shall be. But if you look at the original word in the Greek, it's hoesis. Hoesis, I'm probably not saying that right, but basically what it means is Holy One. So what this means, guys, is is he see he's coming in a holiness, and even the words to describe who he is are very deep and profound. Okay, this is I don't really know how to communicate this. I don't really know how to say it, honestly. But what it is is this title has been in the book of Revelation up to this point. When whenever he's worshipped, he is he which which are who was. And is to come. It says the same thing over and over. But then in here, instead of it being who are, who was, who shall be, it's which are, who was, holy one. So what this is doing is this is connecting the holy one to the ages of the ages. Okay, the righteous one, the holy one. It's a title of his name. What it's saying is that 
there's no distinction between his eternity and his holiness. Okay, that's what's happened. They use they, he said holy one here, not eternal. But all of these words, even though we have three different words here, these words are not, these are words are the same. It's like saying the same thing. Eternity, righteous, holy. Okay, so they they basically replaced that word, okay, or, or not, the, the Holy Spirit did. And, and when John wrote this, he didn't replace it. He put this word holy one to get our attention that he is righteous, he is holy, he is um everlasting he, he is eternal okay so that's what it's doing in revelation 15 and then 16 it has this song okay and then verse 16 and chapter 16 verse 1 and a great voice from the temple okay so this is his great voice he's in the temple like we showed you in the intro of the video his glory went into the temple and then he begins to speak from the temple so this is his great voice from the temple saying pour the bowls okay so i hope that makes sense i'm trying to communicate that the best i can um hopefully that it, it is clear okay now after when this happens he begins to fulfill with these same words the melchizedek judgment priesthood okay so then the judgments in psalm 110 he begins to fulfill he begins to um show these righteous and holy judgments okay so that's what we're calling this section the judgments judgments of the melchizedek priesthood okay so psalm 110 yahweh shall send the rod of your strength so this is the rod of iron so he begins to use the rod of iron so in revelation 1 to he who overcomes will be given a rod of iron and christ says as i have received so in Revelation chapter 2, when he's speaking to seven ecclesia, he's already received the rod of iron. Okay? But now he's beginning to use it. Okay? Yahweh shall send the rod of, of iron, we're calling it, says the rod of your strength out of Zion, and he will rule in the midst of your enemies. Now, this is where we have coded into, again, when you look at the words, our same three words. Your people, now this is the original language I'm reading in the, in the translation here. Your people, then it says free will offerings. So your people are free will offerings. Okay? In the day of your power, in the beauties of your holiness. Okay, so this is Psalms, this is Hebrew, so holiness here is Kodesh. All right, so here's one of these words that we're looking for. We have what? Everlasting righteousness and holiness so those attributes okay that we saw are in his judgments of the melchizedek priesthood can you see that okay let's look at him real quick you are a priest forever olam okay everlasting okay so we got holiness we got forever according to the order of melchizedek well zedek okay melchizedek or zedek it's righteousness so there you get, we have them once again, holiness forever, righteousness. All right, so there, that's where in the song, and when it begins to take place of Revelation 15 and 16, guys, it is the manifestation of the fulfillment of the Z, uh, Melchizedek priesthood. Okay, isn't that amazing? So then you begin to see these judgments throughout the rest of Psalm 110. Yahweh, at your right hand. And again, guys, who, who went to the right hand of the Father? Okay. Well, it, it says that earlier. But then it says Yahweh at the right hand. Think about that. How is Yahweh at the right hand of Yahweh? That's what it's saying here. <laughs> I'll let you do the mental gymnastics on that. But okay. Yahweh at the right hand shall strike through the kings in the day of his wrath. Okay, so this is when Christ has the rod of iron. So we talked about the rod of iron. He has the rod of iron, and that's when he brings the war in Revelation. Okay, and he shall judge among the nations. Okay, that's what we just read that song. He will fill the places with dead bodies. Okay, this is the harvest, the wine press harvest, the wrath of God. And he shall wound the heads of many countries. So this is the rod of iron. This is him coming in the judgments. 
in the in the judgments of the great uh, Melchizedek priesthood order, okay, to bring these judgments. So the great voice from the temple that poured out the bowls, now he's using his righteous judgments on the earth, okay? So um, as we keep going, we can also see this fulfillment in Psalm 2. Okay, Psalm 2 says the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel against Yahweh and Mashiach. Okay, so against Yahweh and Mashiach. So the people are actually going war against God. This is what you're seeing, guys. This is what World War III is that you're seeing in the news. This is what it is. They're really fighting Yahweh and Messiah. They're supposed to be two Christian nations, but they're fighting Yahweh. Verse 6. Yet I have set my king on Mount Zion, or Zion Mountain, of my holy. All right, so here we, we have it again. We got the king on Mount Zion of his holy mountain. Okay, and then he says, I will declare a decree. Okay, so everything that is taking place has to come decree from him. Now, this decree we do see in Daniel. Okay, Daniel said unto 70 weeks. Okay. So we counted those 70 weeks that came to Passover. So all the rumors of war and World War III, they started at Passover. All right. And then verse 26 says, unto the end, war and desolations. So yes, this could be a decree from the king, this very decree in Psalm 2 that it's talking about, okay, of World War III. All right. This could be his rod of iron. Not saying specifically this, but Daniel does say 70 weeks. We counted those 70 weeks right into Passover. So that could be what we're looking at. Now, verse 9 says, He will break them with the rod of iron and dash them like a potter's vessel. Okay, so just keep in mind, guys, these aren't nations. That, I mean, these are people that are influenced, you know, to go to war, to fulfill Christ's judgments on the earth. That's what's going on. And what are our instructions? Okay. To serve y'all with fear. Rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish. So there we could see him as this Melchizedek order of judgment. Now let's look at how these same words are attributed to the saints of the Most High. And as we have mentioned, many people say, oh, we're just groveling sinners. Well, sinners go to hell. Okay, no, we're supposed to be righteous and holy. That's what the Bible says, all right? So, um, again, we have these same words. And now what you can see is that these words are, in fact, attributed to the saints of the Most High. So, we're going to look at Revelation 20 and 22, and you'll see this. And I saw the thrones, and they that sat upon them, judgment was given to them. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Okay? So, they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But, you know, we're going to see... They are considered holy. Okay? Verse 6. Blessed. Okay? Remember, it says, Blessed is he that comes to and waits 1,335 days. Right? Okay? Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. But they shall be priests unto God and of Christ and shall reign with him 1,000 years. Okay? Now, that reigning doesn't stop after a thousand years. It keeps going. It's just talking about the millennium. Okay, this is talking about the millennium. All right. Then we go to Revelation 22. Once we get to Revelation 22, it talks about his servants. His servants shall serve him. They shall see his face. His name shall be in their foreheads. Okay. His servants shall serve him. They shall see his face. His name shall be in their foreheads. Verse 5, they shall reign forever. Okay? Eons of eons, ages of ages, forever and ever. Okay? So just like now we can see these attributes. We saw holy. Okay? He is holy. Kodesh. Now forever and ever. Everlasting. Now these are being attributed to people. Not just Christ. Okay? Can you see that? Behold, I come quickly Okay, um, blessed, okay, again, blessed is he that watches, it says keeps, but we can also see this word can be viewed as watches the words of the prophecy. All right, so we have this, um, 
the servants here and the servants, they'll reign forever and ever. They're blessed. Okay. And then in verse 11, watch. He that is righteous. Okay. So they're reigning forever and ever. They're called holy. Okay. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. Okay. So there you have it all within a couple verses. They'll reign forever and ever. In the Hebrew, you would say olam or ed olam, forever and ever. Okay. They are righteous. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, they are holy. Kodesh. He that is holy, let them be holy still. Okay. And I also want to uh, point out something that in uh, all of these, in this notes here, guys, is the interlinear um, translation Bible, which allows you to look at the Hebrew. And in the interlinear, it says something different than the King James of chapter 22, verse 14. It says, blessed are those washing their robes, that they have the right to the tree of life, and by the gates they do enter the city. Okay? Now, He's saying, you know, blessed. He's, he's still saying here, I'm coming. Okay, so even though this is Revelation 22, it's the end of the book, he's still admonishing, I'm coming. Okay, so he is coming. He that is righteous to be righteous still, he is holy, let him be holy still. Blessed are those washing their robes that they have right to the tree of life and by the gates of the city. So this has already happened. Okay, there are people already blessed that have prepared themselves, that have washed their robes, that are entering the gates of the city. That's why when he, he goes into the temple, no man was able to enter the temple. Well, that's because men are in the temple, okay? They just can't go into the temple building, okay, until the seven bowls, okay? But they can go through the gates of the city and enter the city. Now, washing their robes is significant because now what we can see is this connection here with Daniel, Okay, so we go to Daniel chapter 12, and in verse 10, many shall be purified and made white. What are you making white? Garments. Okay, they're washing the roads, made white garments. They made white and tried. The wise shall understand. Now, this in Hebrew actually would sound like understand and understand, because wise is actually uh, shekel, which means to understand. And bin is understand. So it's like, blessed are those that understand. All right, then verse 12, blessed is he that waits and comes to 1,335 days. Okay, so blessed waits and comes. So waits is like what we saw before, those that are watching, okay? Christ said to watch and pray, okay? Blessed is he that waits. Blessed are those that watch and come to 1,335 days. Okay, now let's look at something else here in Revelation chapter 1. So we saw that admonition of forever and ever, righteous and holy. Okay, when we get to Revelation chapter 1, we see another admonition. So these admonitions happen at the very beginning, Revelation chapter 1, and the very end, Revelation chapter 22. Okay, they're similar. Okay, and we see very important details once again to the book of Daniel. So Revelation 1, verse 3, again, blessed is he that knows. Okay, now King James says reads, which it could be, but the root word here is uh, gnosko, and it means to know. So the word is anagnosko, and it means to know or understand. Okay, so if you're a Greek person, you say blessed is he that not reads, but he that knows, he that understands. Okay, that's what I'm saying. You have to know, you have to understand based on who you are if you're in the prophecy. Okay, blessed is he that knows and they that hear the words of this prophecy and watch or keep. It says keep, but again, we're saying watch because watch means, it's tereo, means to guard. Okay, to keep something. It's to guard something. It's to watch Okay, blessed is he that watches, blessed is he that waits, and come to 1,335 days. All right, and um, those things which are written there. And so blessed is he that what? Knows. You have to know. You have to know this, guys, okay? Revelation 1, that's verse 3, and verse 5, this is interlinear again. To the one loving us and releasing us from our sins. 
through the blood of him. Okay? So he's released us from our sins. That, is, that, is, that doesn't mean we are a continual sinner. No, that means you're righteous. Okay? Verse 6. And he has made us a kingdom of priests. So when he makes us a kingdom of priests, what do you suppose that is? Well, it's the order of Melchizedek, isn't it? Okay, he has made us a kingdom of priests unto God and the Father of him. Him be the glory and dominion for the ages of the ages. Amen. Okay, so they're kingdom and priests for what? For a few years. Okay, no, eternally. Ages of the ages. Amen. And this is what it says about the saints in Daniel chapter 7. Time's sake, I'm not going to read all that, but that's, you can see the verses here. So this is what it's talking about. So once we conclude, what do we see? We see everlasting righteousness holy attributed to the saints. We see everlasting righteousness holy, okay, attributed to Christ. And as he comes in the glory. And we want to conclude with this. Okay, back to Psalm 2. Remember what it said. He's going to start bringing terrible judgments on the earth. Okay, and I do all this teaching so that you are not caught up in those judgments. Caught up in the wrath. Okay, but you would know him. Okay, you would, you would rise up with who we are to be in these last days. So Psalm 2, 11 says, Serve Yahweh with fear. Rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish.